G'day viewers, I'm on a bit of a stealth mission at the moment. I got a phone call last night from a fellow named Glenn Leadbeater. He lives up at Lake Tyres and he goes fishing for sharks off the beach down that area along the 90 mile beach. When he gave me the phone call, I said, mate, I'm coming straight down. It's a bit of a stealth mission for overnight and tomorrow. Um, these guys are on a Facebook page called, the, I think it's Surf Fish in the 90 mile beach in offshore. And they get a lot of good fish off the beaches there. They copped a bit of, bad, bit of a bad rep on the um, press a couple of years ago in the, in the news for targeting great white sharks and you know and carrying on on the beach and stuff like that. They don't target great whites. They target fish like any fisherman does. So you know, if they're fishing off a beach and a great white hooks onto their line, then they have to release it. Same as if you're out in a boat. There's no difference. These guys target schoolies, gummies, bronzies, hammerheads, makos, anything they can get off the beach. If a great white hooks on, so be it. But anyway, put all that aside, you'll soon see what these guys are all about. We're going to head down there and try and target a big toothy off the beach this weekend. Who could not love this town for what it is? I mean, you've got a great pub down here, you've got great beaches, you've got lakes. There's no wonder that myself and everyone else on the Ausfish crew absolutely loves coming down here any chance we get. So when I got the call from Glenn to come down here for a shark mission, <laughs> he didn't have to twist my arm, I was straight down here. So last night we're down, we come down on Friday night, it's now Saturday, we come down onto the beach. We met, uh, we met Glenn down on the beach. With no luck, didn't have any hits, except Scotty got a <laughs> quite a big Port Jackson up the beach. And that was about it. And after that, he, he and I decided to go do a bit of prawning. Went down, prawns are really scarce this time. We, there's a few big ones, we probably got about a kilo of prawns, but we took, we're out there for a good four hours. But I'll tell you what, we've got one cracking flounder. I might just show you that now. That fish was awesome. Apparently they're pretty rare to get that big down here. They used to be really plentiful, but these days they're not. The fishing really changes when the entrance to uh, Lake Tyres opens up and the water flows in and out. So, you know, it always changes. Which it can be a good thing because you get all sorts of different fish. So, but anyway, we're off to a place past uh, Orbost. We're gonna go fishing on the surf up here. Glenn's got a nice little spot up here, which he reckons can be uh, quite productive. So that's where we're heading up to now. Okay, so here down at Cape Codron, that was quite a nice dirt track to come down. Bit of wildlife, saw a massive hawk. Boys are over there getting the yak ready to go paddle some baits out. And I'll, uh, I'll introduce you to the boys uh, down on the beach. Okay, I'd like, to, like you all to meet one of the guys, one of the admins from the 90 mile beach, uh, the 90 mile fishing beach page on Facebook. Glenn, how you going? And uh, his two helpers out the back here, what are your names fellas? Sorry? Mitchell. Mitchell? And Tim. And Tim. The, uh, we're, we're down here at Cape Conran, and I'm a bit puffed because I've been running up and down the sand dunes. It is sensational here. The water is flat for a surf beach. This is beautiful. We've got birds breaking in the back, and we're very, very optimistic. Okay, so I'm here with Max Somerville. Max, how you going, matey? Good, Michael. He's a living legend down here and pioneered this sort of fishing for these young fellas. When I say young fellas, I'm talking about like Brendan and Glenn and all the other young guys that come down here. How long have you been doing this for, mate? Um, oh, 25 years. 25 years, wow. You've done a ride off the beaches? Exceptionally well. Exceptionally well. <laughs> right, so I'm here with one of the other fellas from the Surf Fishing 90 Mile Beach page. Brendan Headley, how you going, mate? Good. Now, how long have you been doing this for? Oh, a couple of years. A couple of years? Yeah. Seen some mighty sharks brought in? Yeah, I have. Now, the, uh, one thing I was trying to get across to the viewers, you guys don't come out here targeting great whites. No. You guys are just like any guy goes out in the boat targeting sharks. I just want a bronzy. You still haven't pulled in a bronzy. I've seen you with a nice hammerhead. Yeah, 
Oh, big one, that one. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, well, I better stop annoying these boys because I just want to get their lines out in the water and why not? This water is sensational today. This is my favourite spot. Oh, there's lots of gummies here. Lots of gummies, big, yeah. Big gummies. I've been told there's a lot of good gummies along here. It's a hell of a drive out here, four and a half hours from Packingham. For you. Yeah. An hour and a half for me. Yeah, lucky you, eh? All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll let you get into it, mate. What sort of bait are you using there, mate? Uh, I'm just potty mullet, this one. Yep. Nice and smelly. Yep. That's one hell of a big mullet. Yep. Plenty of hook exposure, I see. Yeah. Yeah, you got this big long cable running out the back. How long is that, mate? <laughs> uh, it's probably about 12 metres, this one. 12 metres? Yep. I suppose when you do get a big sharp, they like to wrap themselves up. Yeah, you, uh, you soon lose a metre if they decide to start turning in the wash, so the longer the better. Yep. Now basically, I'll go over this rig. As you can see, it's a big long cable, which is about 300 kilo braking strain. 600 pounds in the old terms. Now right here he's got an anchor point that basically keeps it stationary and he has a coke bottle which floats the front of the bait up into the water makes it look a lot more natural for the sharks and keeps it off the bottom so the crab's getting at it mate. That's right. Safety first eh Glenn? Yeah. Got a good old uh, water snake on, good to see. Let's pop that back in there, don't pull that cord too early mate alright? I won't. <laughs> Now, Brendan's already out in his jack now and he's paddling back in, so he's got his first mate out. mullet that he catches himself. I only get a chance to catch any so I'll just run down the gotcha and I'll grab these these twin stripy tuners. This one's a little bit small so we threw the bigger one on. And as you can see, a little blood in that. That doesn't attract a toothy, nothing will. It's powerful mate, this thing's got power. I'm, I'm not getting any line on it. Big, it's real huge. I don't think that's a killer. Nah, it's not a killer. It's a fuck up. Woohoo! Mate, I've got a lot of drag on this and it's ripping it. Every bit of line I just got back, it took that and doubled. Today where I can get line on it. <laughs> That bait hasn't been out long. That 30 tuna. Minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes, there we go. 30 minutes, that stripy tuna just got smashed. Yeah, you want to run? 
so tired. And that's just bringing in the bait after he took me for a big run. <laughs> wow, been saying impossible bronzy. So I picked up the bait and ran straight at me and I saw my line go slack, so I reeled in and went whack. Set the hook and off it went. But um, that's all right, still early. If there's one around, he'll come back. That's what's left of the tuna. He absolutely shredded it. Oh, while we're passing, passing the time, waiting for a big shark to hit one of these big rods, we've just got the surf rods out. I haven't actually got mine out. I'll just let uh, Scotty and these young fellas have a go. We don't have a lot of room. When you set the shark rods out, you've got you to space them a good you know, 10 to 15 metres apart, otherwise the lines will get crossed and tangled. So, I'm, uh, yeah, not, I'm not uh, surf fishing tonight. I might, I might put one out later if I go for a walk up the beach. The last one. That's a big tailor, mate. Yeah, big tailor. That fish. It's a dragon tailor, buddy. That's great. That is a fish. Very good fish, mate. Little salmon. Mate. First fish for the day. He's alright. Yeah, he's beautiful. Jumped a few times in the white. Yeah, there's been a few fish around. The last one had a bite out of him. Oh, the salmon? Yeah, the one the young fella got. Oh. That's good size. Yeah. Excellent. On the popper, mate. Yep. Now get back to eating. Eating your sand sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> we just heard the drag go on this one. It's just sort of started drifting out. Here we go. Here we go. Floating up. There's nothing taking it. There's nothing taking it. Brendan, we're on. Peel a line, so we're not sure. Uh, this one was pretty far out, and I'm pretty sure it was a whole tuner on it. So, Glenn's got his work cut out for him. Bigger than the last 
That's one, mate. There you go. There's a hundred kilo, there's a seven kilo, no problem. It's got a little hook in it too, look. Someone's caught it on a surf rod. We need to get some slack, boys. As you can see behind me, we've got glow sticks on our lines. Now, the conventional way when you're fishing, surf fishing at night or in a boat or off the beach, is you get the glow sticks and you click them to your rod. Well, you can't really do that with game rods because they're too thick. But you can, you can tape them on, but you don't want them on the rod anyway. We're not looking for the rod to bounce. We've actually connected them to the line with a lacquer band. Now, what's going to happen is, one or two things are going to happen. The glow sticks are going to go screaming off towards the water or the fish will pick it up and come towards you and that means the line will drop so that for the glow stick will drop to the ground so that's what we're looking for so if we see the line the glow stick going for a six or if we see a drop we know something's on it looks like you've got what we've been getting mate yeah oh yeah not bad waste of a good bait I don't know mate, I know a lot of people in West Port would love to catch this. Show us those pearly whites mate. Nice size too. Yeah. So, that one yours Brennan? Yeah. Oh, it's better than catching up, mate. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> How many baits you got left in the water? One. Oh, uh, well. And the surf rod. That's better than nothing. I'm tipping you not paddling anymore right now. No, no way. Not the dark time. <laughs> dark time, shark time. That's it. Come on, Give me a couple of head banks. Yeah. Pretty sure it's just another killer. Yeah, it's not really giving me too much grief, so I dare say it's another seven killer. But that's cool by me because I reckon they're awesome. Finally beached myself a toothy. He uh he actually put up a little bit of a fight. But still, wasn't the bronze we were after, but you know what? Seven gillers are just a cool looking fish. I must admit they're actually pretty fun to catch. They're a big shark, they got big teeth, they're quite impressive. Well I'm impressed anyway. Something playing with one of the rods, the line keeps going slack and then it stops and it's going slack again. We're pretty sure it's another seven gill. Um, 
So young Mitch is going to grab it, bring it in, and see what it is. Let's hope it's a, let's hope it's a fish, mate, not just a bait. The last thing we want to do is be bringing baits in. Well, they could be out there because we're not taking them back out. And off he goes. Wait on it. There's the action on him, eh? These young fit fellas. Well, I'm truly old. Well, see why he's got the hook in his mouth? Yeah. Let's go and pat him down. <laughs> How's that, Dylan? Pretty cool. They are a cool little fish, aren't they? That's 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 when I get to shark. <laughs> they are razor sharp. Related to the tiger shark. They've got the exact same jaws, exact same teeth. You put your hand in there and you'll get ripped over. No problem at all. <laughs> Careful Glenn. <laughs> Watch those feet, mate! <laughs> the old one-two hammer throw! Yep. Well, he's back in safely. Well, that's us done down here at Cape Condren tonight. I've had an absolute ball over the past couple of nights, mate. Bit of fun. A lot of seven-gillers. No what? bronzies. No. Well, we do think we hooked on to one. Yeah. But we didn't get it, but you know, you, you get that. I know you're not a big fan of the seven-gillers, mate, but any fish you can get that's bigger than yourself with teeth in and off the beach it can't be a bad thing <laughs> waste the bait i reckon and waste the bait <laughs> well look i really enjoyed it and i know many people out there probably would too but uh now the facebook page you guys you guys admin on which is yourself um brendan hadley and michael somerville yep the uh surf fishing the 90 mile beach and offshore now have a look at this page guys if you're into shark fishing there's so many different tips and pictures and rigs and all sorts of stuff going on on this page, isn't there? Yeah, plenty of information for anyone, so... There's about 4,000, or well, nearly 5,000 members. Nearly 5,000, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's going really well. It's a great page, there's some great blokes on it. Get on and have a look for yourselves. I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Ozfish TV, and we'll see you next week.